Hi, this video can talk about PPP operations, uh, primarily LCP and MCP. A lot of acronyms there. First of all, I'd like to just point you to a uh, Packet Life cheat sheet on point to point protocol. Uh, PacketLife.net is a great place to go for uh, cheat sheets and a lot of other good information. Uh, they have cheat sheets on all kinds of routing protocols, IPv6 and other things. Uh, on the right there is a little blog by uh, Jeremy Stretch. And I just uh, noticed today, and that's why I put this up there, looks like he's one of those lucky people that is benefiting from uh, Google Fiber to the home. So he's uh, uh, talking about that a little bit. Anyway, great website to, to go to. Uh, Anyway, let's continue here. So PPP, PPP encapsulates the data frames over layer, layer two, uh, over, well, layer one physical links, but uh, using layer two over the physical link. Uh, establishes a direct connection. This can be done over all types of media, serial cables, phone lines, cell, um, t telephones, radio links, fiber, whatever it might be. Uh, PPP has three main components. First of all, HDLC-like framing. So the layer two frame is similar to that, similar to that of HDLC. It can transport multi-protocol packets over the PPP, meaning it can uh, transmit different uh, layer three protocols. Also uses two things. Uh, NCP, Network Control Protocol. This is used for establishing and configuring the, the different layer three protocols, primarily uh, IPv4 and IPv6. There's also LCP, Link Control Protocol. This is used for establishing, configuring, and testing the link itself. We'll look at both of these in a little bit more detail. Okay, so PPP includes many features not available in HDLC, uh, including link quality control management, which actually can monitor link. Uh, you can specify an error percentage, and if, that, if the error percentage falls below that, that configured threshold, it, the link will be taken down and packets will be either rerouted or dropped. Also supports authentication with PAP, Password Authentication Protocol, or CHAP, Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. We'll be looking at both of these in more, or in more detail during the configuration portion. There's other things it also uh, supports, things like uh, compression and also multi-link PPP. So we'll talk about both of those in just a moment here. Okay. The focus of this is on LCP and NCP. LCP, Link Control Protocol. And as I mentioned before, it's used to establish, configure, and test the data link connection. Things like handling various limits on packet size, detecting common misconfiguration errors, terminating link, determining when a link is functioning properly or when it is failing. Uh, these packets also allow the link partners, the two ends, to dynamically negotiate options such as authentication, compression, multi-link PPP, and callback. So we'll take a look at authentication, compression, and multi-link PPP in more detail here in a little bit. Callback is something that we used to use uh, primarily with uh, PSTN, the telephone network, or ISDN, where you would actually, from home, when I would use this place I used to work, I used to call in to work, but I didn't want to have to pay for the phone connection. This is back in the days when you used to have to pay if you went over a certain number of minutes or if it was long distance and that sort of thing. So you'd basically call and then it would hang up the connection and call you back so uh, the, the cost of the call would be on the other end and not you as far as the cost of the telephone call itself. Okay, anyway, uh, NCP, we'll talk more about LCP and NCP in, in detail here in a moment. But once LCP establishes 
the, the layer two connection, LCP takes over. And what LCP does is it exchanges NCP packets to establish and configure the appropriate uh, network layer protocol, such as IPv4, or IPv6. And it uses uh, these values in those packets to establish the, the, uh, the uh, proper layer three protocol. So it uses something called ICP-CP, uh, Internet Com uh, Protocol Control Protocol, and it's IPCP for IPv4 and IPv6CP for IPv6. And each layer three protocol has its own network control protocol. When a host requests that the connection be terminated, NCP will tear down the layer three session, then LCP tears down the data link. We'll see how all this fits together in just a moment. Okay, so as far as the PPP frame structure, okay, so we can see that it's quite similar to that of HDLC. A couple of things I wanna point out here though. Take a look at the address, right? So the address is basically just a string of one bits. It's a single byte that contains eight one bits. And remember, this is serial. Right? So whatever goes in one end is just going to come out the other. Okay? So as opposed to a multi-access technology uh, like Ethernet, that packets can come in one end of the link, but can go out all different kind, different ends, maybe all of them. So in Ethernet, this is why we have a MAC address for the destination MAC address and a source MAC address as well, but we need a destination MAC address to uniquely identify uh, where, the, where the frame is going. That's Ethernet. In serial, uh, in serial data link frames like PPP, we just say it's a, hey, you, at the other end. Uh, basically, hey, I'm sending it out, I'm sending it into this end. I know it's just going to come out this end towards you. All right. Uh, the other thing mentioned is the protocol field specifies what kind of data is being encapsulated. All right. So establishing the PPP session. So there's three, uh, three phases. Uh, there's link establishment and configuration. So uh, before any kind of data can be exchanged, LCP must first open the connection and negotiate the configuration options. Okay. Uh, then LCP will test the link to determine whether the link is sufficient to bring up the network layer protocols, the NCP, right? That's uh, for, for both IPv4 or IPv6. Okay. So once the, uh, it's determined that the link quality is sufficient, NCP can then separately configure the network layer protocols and bring them up. That's the IPCP or IPv6 CP. Okay, so if we look at this in a little bit more detail, we have the link, estab link establishment. So uh, this is where LCP actually uh, sets up the link, sends out link establishment frames, link maintenance frames, we'll see that in a moment, and link termination frames. So link establishment. So LCP opens up the connection and negotiates certain configuration parameters. Okay, it actually sends a configuration request frame. We can see that that's, that's the first thing that's happening here, sends out the LCP configuration request. Uh, so the rep responder processes the request and depending on whether the options that is in the LCP configuration request, this might include things like authentication, compression, etc., uh, whether or not the options are acceptable or not. If the operate, if if it is not acceptable, it will send back a configuration NAC or configure configure reject message. If the options are acceptable are acceptable, it will send back a LCP configuration ACK message. Okay, then if authentication is one of the options, it will actually go into the authentication stage. We'll talk about that in a separate video, PAP chap authentication. Uh, 
The operation of the link is then handed over to NCP. And that's what we see right here, NCP configuration. And that's where the does the IPCP or IPv6 CP to set up the uh, layer three protocols. When NCP has completed the, N the uh, is finished, then LCP transitions into link, link, ma link maintenance. All right, we'll take a look at all this. Okay, here we go. All right, link maintenance. So, <clears throat> After the link has been established, go into link maintenance mode. Okay. Uh, the uh, echo requests and echo reply packets are sent. Uh, these are just for testing the link. Can, uh, after data ex is exchanged, then uh, the code reject and protocol reject frames are sent to provide feedback when one device receives it to provide feedback if a device receives an invalid frame. Okay, the sending device will then resend the packet if it has been rejected. Yep. All right, let's talk about link termination. So the link remains open, by the way. Uh, data is constantly is exchanged between the two points. Once the link has been established, uh, tested, uh, then it just goes ahead, it's in link ma maintenance mode. Okay, <clears throat> but uh, LCP can uh, terminate the link. We'll talk about how that happens in a moment here. <coughs> Excuse me. NCP only terminates the net network layer portion of the link. So let's go through this here in a moment. So first of all, when the link to be terminated, both the NCP and the LCP both must terminate. Okay, L NCP will only terminate the IPCP, IPv6 CP portion of the link. LCP actually terminates the, the, the layer two, layer one portion of the link. So why would we terminate the link? Why would PPP, why would the link be terminated? Well, it could be because of a loss of the carrier, authentication failure, uh, link quality failure, expiration of an idle period timer. So if no data is being sent over the link for a specified uh, time period, or just administratively closing the link. Okay, so LCP closes the link by exchanging the, uh, its own set of termination packets, as we can see down here. Okay. All right, uh, NCP. So NCP happens after the LCP actually has established the link. Okay. Then what NCP does is negotiate the, uh, the layer three portion of it. Okay, mentioned IPCP and IPv6 CP. Okay, these are responsible for configuring, enabling, and disabling the IP modules on both ends of the link. Okay, two options. So these include things like compression. Okay, these are some of the options we'll talk about here in a moment, how to configure these options. But this allows you to negotiate which algorithm is going to be used to compress the TCP and IP headers, stacker or predictor. We'll talk about that in a moment. Also, the IP address. So the initiating device can specify the IP address to be used for, for routing over the PPP link or request a specific IP address from the responder. Okay, after the NCP process is complete, the link goes into open state. We'll see this, <clears throat> excuse me, we see that we can actually verify this uh, in one of the show commands I'll show you, which I will uh, display uh, to you in just a moment. Okay, and then LCP takes, takes over after the NCP configuration, go into LCP maintenance phase. All right, so this is just a little example. We'll see more of this of the LCP and NCP operations uh, when we get into the configuration.